What's happening? It's Shane here. And today we're going to be talking about the least regretted college majors. Anybody who's watched my channel know that a significant amount of people end up regretting going to college. And that is for a bunch of different reasons. But the main ones are that first of all, it costs a lot. And second of all, a lot of the time, it's not going to help you get a job if you go for the wrong major. So a lot of people are going to college, spending a bunch of money, going deep into debt, and then they aren't even able to pay that debt off it doesn't really give them a return on their investment. But that's not the only reason people regret going to college. There are many others. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the majors that people tend to not regret. And making the decision on the best majors to pick is very difficult. It's one of those things where a lot of people will pick their major and they end up changing it, you know, two or three times before they graduate. It's too much. And that's because the best major is going to change depending on the person, right? So if you need help picking the best possible college major for you, definitely check my channel out. This video is going to help you as well. But I do have a course down in the description below. That's the College 101 course. It is going to help you pick the perfect major for you. It's also going to help you get the most out of college with the least amount of time, effort, and money. And before we get into the video, make sure to gently tap the like button, hit the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell, and let's get right into it. Number five on the list is going to be health sciences and technologies. Now, with the way ZipRecruiter collected this data, 18.94% of people who got this degree regretted it. And the main reason for their regret was because they ended up having low job satisfaction afterwards. Now this of course encompasses a bunch of different degrees and career paths out there, but a couple examples would be a radiation therapist or a dental hygienist. And also as a comparison, the uh, most regretted type of degree would be English and foreign language, and that is 42% regret, and the reason for that is impractical or limited job opportunities. Now the two that I mentioned, uh, radiation technologist and dental hygienist, those are kind of like associate level degrees in that they would take around two to three years. But one thing that's great about health degrees is they're very flexible in that there are many different options for you. So for instance, if you wanted like a four-year degree, you could get your BSN that, and become a nurse. If you wanted a six-year degree, you could get into something like physician assistant or now known as physician associate. And of course, the main reason that people regretted the degree was the low job satisfaction. And so that's the reason that I always try to warn people who want to go into healthcare, that a lot of the time you are going to be around people who are sick, right? They're having one of the worst days of their life. They're probably also very frustrated with our medical system, which is totally understandable. So you really do have to be someone who has thick skin if you work in a lot of different healthcare settings. You always have to maintain professionalism. But with that being said, for the right type of personality, it's extremely rewarding because you are going to help people get better, right? You're gonna help them improve their health. Now, the next one on the list is also very similar. It's also medical related, and that is going to be number four, uh, health administration and assisting. Now, again, they are basically clustering together a bunch of different healthcare related degrees. This one is usually a little bit more on the leadership or management side of things, but only 17.95% of people regretted getting this degree. And again, same reason, low job satisfaction. But again, that's going to be extremely person to person. Uh, if you're the type of personality that works really well within healthcare, you are going to love your job. So especially when it comes to a healthcare degree, and really this goes for all degrees, and this is something I've said in many of my videos, it's worth it to plan ahead, do your research, talk to people in the career you're trying to go for. In many cases, you can even shadow them. So you can even just watch what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. But healthcare professions in general are known for being extremely stable, right? So not only are healthcare professions in general growing at 15% over the next 10 years, which is the best out of all different types of professions out there, even better than technology. But on top of that, just from more of a practical standpoint, let's say the world like really goes to hell in a handbasket, like it's almost like an apocalyptic type situation healthcare professionals are still going to have their jobs. You're never gonna be able to automate like a nurse's job or a doctor's job. And on top of that, even if we go into a situation where civilization collapses, we're almost back in the dark ages, there's still going to be doctors and nurses and people that help doctors out. People are always going to get sick. Unfortunately, people are always going to die and they're going to need people to help them, people to take care of them. And on top of that, healthcare professions do tend to be pretty high paying as well. So the median uh, annual wage for all healthcare professionals is $68,000. That was in 2019. 
and uh, for all occupations, it's 39,000, right? So it's almost double the uh, median annual wage of all occupations. And keep in mind, this is including people who work at kind of like a two-year associate level, people who work at a four-year level, et cetera. So there are many good jobs out there at pretty much every single level, which is not the same for all different types of degrees out there. Number three on the list is going to be engineering. And this one came in at 15.91% of people regret getting their degree. However, uh, the reason is the best jobs require advanced degrees. Now, I do think there might be a little bit of bias here. I agree with where it's placed, but I think there might be a little bit of bias, uh, almost like survivorship bias, because a lot of people end up not making it through engineering. So the people who do make it through, even though it's incredibly hard, are gonna feel very proud of themselves because they really did accomplish something. Engineering degrees are no joke. When you look at the statistics, uh, the last 40 years, the highest paying types of degrees overall are engineering degrees, and it's not even close. Now, I think in the next 40 years, I wouldn't be surprised if technology degrees actually outpace engineering degrees or catch up to them, but I'm not Nostradamus, I can't say for sure. Um, engineering degrees are a very solid option. You know, you look at the last census, uh, engineering degrees over the last 40 years, uh, people make $3.5 million on average over a lifetime, compared to 2.4 million for all other types of majors. It's by far number one. The second one on the list is computers and math. That's 3.1 million. I would not be surprised if that one actually catches up to engineering over the next 40 years. Now, one thing that's great about engineering is not only is it good if you graduate with an engineering degree and then become an engineer, but it's pretty much good no matter where you end up going, right? So you can graduate with an engineering degree, become a software developer. You can graduate with an engineering degree, go into business. It's a very flexible degree. And on top of that, you end up earning a lot of money pretty much no matter what direction you go, right? So we see in the census here, people who graduated with an engineering degree and then they went into sales and related still made $3.3 million over a lifetime. Even the ones who went into art, which you know traditionally obviously isn't one of the highest paying, made $3 million over a lifetime, which is way above average. Now you could argue it's correlation or causation. You know, you could say that people who are smart enough to become engineers are also people who are more likely to make a lot of money. So it really doesn't matter what degree or field they go into. But from my experience with people I've worked with and a lot of things that I've seen, uh, companies just love hiring engineers, right? They know that they're getting a very smart, very hardworking person. And so even if it's for a job that's kind of unrelated, they know that this person is going to be able to figure it out, right? So like I said in the beginning, engineering, very, very difficult degree. Uh, it's gonna really stress you out. It's probably gonna be the hardest thing that you have done up to this point in your life. But the next one on the list is for people who maybe wanna take it a little more easy and have a better college experience. That's number two on the list, business degrees, right? So business degrees, only about 15.5% of people regret getting their business degree. And the main reason is because they're too general. Now business degrees get a lot of flack. A lot of people make fun of them, say it's super easy and all that sort of thing. Um, I did take quite a few business classes back in college and I can confirm that they are much easier than like my hard science classes, at least for me. But I think just generally speaking, they are you know, on the side of being a little easier. I also lived in a scholarship hall of 50 guys. There were probably about five engineers and like five to 10 people who majored in business. And I can tell you for sure, the people who majored in business were partying and having fun all the time, and the engineers were studying all the time. Business degrees are also extremely flexible, not only in the degree that you can get. So for instance, you can get a business degree and very easily pair it with a different degree. So you could double major in business and technology or business and engineering, business and math, et cetera. They pair very, very well with pretty much any other type of degree out there. But on top of that, once you get the business degree, once you graduate, graduate, you can work in almost any industry for almost any company. And there's a lot of different jobs that are going to be open for you. Now I did the video on the degrees that create the most millionaires and business degrees made up six out of the top 10, right? So engineering was number one technically, but they kind of grouped all the engineering degrees together, whereas they separated the business degrees and business made six out of the top 10. So you could argue that business degrees are even better than engineering degrees when it comes to, uh, 
uh, improving your chances of making you a millionaire. And I think one of the reasons for that is because if you get a business degree, not only do you increase your chances of starting a successful business, but on top of that, I think it teaches you a lot of soft financial skills at an early age, like saving, investing, and financial planning, right? So there's a lot of benefits to becoming a business major. I think they get a bad rap, but I've done many videos on this channel where I you know, break down the statistics and business majors tend to do very well. Now, again, it could be partly correlation or causation or both, but if you're going by the numbers, business majors do tend to do very well. Next on the list, number one, no surprise to anyone who's watched my channel, it's going to be computer science and mathematics. 12.78% of people who graduated with this degree regretted it. And the main reason was that it's very stressful, right? So computer science and mathematics are going to be pretty hard compared to your average degree, but it's one of those skills that's incredibly hot right now. Like learning how to code is just, it's one of the best possible things that you can learn to do at this particular time in history, right? And ZipRecruiter also has this other thing called the skills index that I've talked about on this channel. Channel, very useful tool and if you look at this index there's so many different technology and computer programming related skills that are considered to be the most valuable skills that you can learn, right? So software engineering is number one, analytical skills is in the top 10, net programming skills, software development, application development, web services skills, uh, information technology kind of related, software development, Python programming skills, computer science, right? So there's just so many skills that are related to learning how to do computer programming, software development, etc. And so like 15 out of the top 20 or so, you can basically relate all of them back to computer science. And it looks like the way that the world's going with automation and optimizing processes, that this is just gonna become more and more valuable into the future. And when you look at the statistics, it just looks fantastic, right? So technology, one of the best possible industries that you can go into. Uh, a lot of the technology companies, not only are they known for paying people really well, but they're also known for giving them ridiculous benefits, not only stock options, you know, but sometimes it's like 401k matching up to like 18%. But on top of that, they also make the person's quality of life ridiculously good. If you look at Glassdoor and you see the companies that consistently rate the highest when it comes to quality of life and how happy people are, how their job satisfaction is, you're gonna see so many technology related companies. And on top of that, I think this might be one of the most underrated things. And it's something that I don't really mention all that often. But basically, if you think about skills that you can leverage yourself with, there's not that many out there. Just a few off the top of my head, um, sales and marketing, right? That's a skill where you can actually leverage yourself, where one person can uh, conceivably reach like a million people. Another one would be uh, video, right? Making videos like this or creating content, so uh, types of technology-related communication. That's another skill where you can leverage, you know, one person to reach possibly millions of people. And then another one is computer programming, learning how to code. You could legitimately write a computer program, create maybe some type of software or something along those lines that could reach millions of people all on your own. You could create a website or a technology that millions of different people use and you're just one person doing it. And the truth is there just aren't that many skills out there where you could do that. And the few skills that are out there have insane amounts of leverage. All right, so that's all I have for this video, guys. Hope it helped you a little bit um, in trying to figure out what degree path you wanna go for. If you haven't done it already, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video, and I will see you next time.